Oh, okay, so. that we have held in 
in a beautiful island, uh, of course, of Italy, uh, in the northern part of the, of the island, uh, which is the Palmyra Island. And if you want, I invite you to look on your phone, uh, on the internet, just to watch uh, some uh, beautiful photos of uh, this beautiful island. But the question is, uh, uh, why I'm going to show you that? Because the Meta project had the aim, uh, had the aim of put uh, arts in the center of learning, arts capacity art dance. And because it's uh, an explanation of how MOCA evaluates the project in a participatory way, the same way that uh, we, will do, we will do together in the next meetings, and uh, I hope to do it in, uh, in presence. So for today, um, MOCA decided to talk about that, and I'm here for, uh, for that. And uh, just for start, in uh, 2018, uh, MOCA facilitated uh, this participatory laboratory whose objectives are strictly related to capacity arte project. Let's go uh, to see uh, the key aspects of the project, where that were three. Uh, the first one in particular uh, want to uh, disseminate a positive idea of uh, cultural heritage. As Capacitarte projects want, and in particular we can read the, the volunteer to uh, underline the importance of evaluate cultural heritage as a key for inclusion and respect. Inclusion, in fact, is a transversal and a central uh, topic that we can find in all of these three aspects and, of course, only also in uh, Capacitarte project. The second one is creativity as a driver for change. As I said first, uh, for MOCA, the innovative and ex uh, especially the transformative pedagogy and education is the core. Is the core of our vision. And uh, in Meta, the creativity became the driver for change and of change. And the last one is the human rights. The second aspect of the project that we can read is the pedagogical uh, approach, which is uh, related to education and training. So, uh, the first of all is the centrality of education and training for justice, for inclusion and for growth. And the second one is a pedagogical approach uh, related to learning by doing especially. The learning by doing methods in fact allow people to learn and make inference from practice to theory and not on the contrary. The third is inclusion and interculturalism, uh, and I want to stress uh, in particular the inclusion, as I said, is a transversal part of all of these three aspects. And the uh, first one, we write that a vision of the Europe as an inclusive as an welcoming society for all uh, based uh, for all uh, based on interculturalism and based on uh, multilanguage. Another uh, one theoretical approach of this laboratory was the uh, deep ecology, as well, uh, which is an environmental philosophy that can promote the respect for all living beings, and it's related also to uh, the coding, the, the last one, bullet point of this slide. So let's go ahead. Uh, now uh, we are talking about the outcomes of the workshop in Palmaria and we have uh, identified six of the outcomes. The six outcomes are very big, are very generative, are very extensive. The first one is share lesson learned from the Meta project and co-evaluate experience. In particular, the sharing of the learning allowed to make an evaluation of the impact of the project on the participants. In the pink, 
uh, circle, we can read that the workshop can also aim to put in common any arts basic methods and tools that can contribute to more inclusive classroom and to more inclusive workshop society. The art, in fact, is the central part of the project, as I said. Uh, next one is to appreciate the importance of co-constructive knowledge and co-constructive skills, soft skills uh, in general, in a deeply ecological environment. Uh, this is connected uh, with the theoretical framework of deep ecology and the reconciliation of nature in a naturalistic setting, uh, as I said uh, first. Again, we go ahead with the other uh, two of the outcomes, which are identify the value of the contamination and the opportunity take from the long experience of stakeholder, the initiative for the sustainability, and um, why not uh, we also stress the emotional uh, part of each participant by the part of sharing emotion and sharing the feeling during the, uh, the workshop. So now uh, I'm going to explain the three different parts of activities that we carried out uh, during this. Uh, in this first slide, uh, in particular, we can find the description of the first of the first session uh, with this beautiful picture of all the participants, and there also are some staff from uh, of architecture designers in uh, in there. Um, in details, the first activities start with a nice break activities and uh, with all the participants in a circle and with all the participants that presented to each other and share their ideas, share their concerns, share their feelings about the day, about the, the workshop, about uh, themselves. So, uh, next for the second, for the second session, uh, was divided into four different uh, steps. During the first step, all the participants were divided into, of course, four groups with uh, four uh, staff, such as colored paper, marker, post-it, uh, to use during the workshop. The discussion, the first discussion was dedicated to the identification of the competencies, so of key competencies, and I will explain later uh, on the next slide uh, which type of competencies they um, identified. After this first discussion divided um, in group, they tried to answer to all of the three questions that I have reported on, on the screen. The first one is how this confidence could be reached through art based didactics uh, with the aim of highlight the importance of art, the importance of heritage, of cultural heritage in the instructional design of uh, educational art. Uh, of course, the second one is uh, uh, which is the added value of art as an instrument of learning. And the third one, the last one, how could we consolidate, how could we share, how could we reach a major structuration of the experience that we learned from the project. And this point, uh, uh, in particular, underlined the importance of dissemination, the importance of communication, the importance of sustainability of the project in the future. Okay. Here in this slide, uh, we can find some more uh, details about the four steps of the second session. First of all, we can also find the four competences that people chose it during the day, which were uh, first leadership, creativity, communication, and uh, commitment. After the selection of uh, these 
four and uh, different competencies between a very, very different uh, competencies. People try to underline what type of competencies were brought uh, to provide outside as a result uh, of the project. So what type of methodology they want to use to do that and provide some example. Later, we also ask to think about practical outcome. A practical outcome means uh, an outcome that um, had to be really uh, achievable. And also the challenges, the elements that could have had a repercussion in some way uh, that need to be controlled. And uh, last one session, try to identify the connection between the selective competencies. So, uh, in this slide, uh, we can uh, see the final output of uh, this second uh, activity, the of this second session. Uh, this is the final output for the competencies of, uh, of leadership inside the chart that explain and uh, this chart uh, also show all the work done by the participant. It's, uh, it's very interesting and uh, just to underline some part of the work done by the participant, uh, starting with what, what type of leadership uh, they want to provide, they want to promote a uh, dynamic and creative leadership, a new from common and pro-social uh, leadership, a new approach that, that uh, does not look at leadership merely as a question of power. How to do that? From a vertical and individualistic leadership to a horizontal one, to a communitarian and a horizontal leadership with uh, the promotion of sharing, of sustainability, of a creative challenge. Uh, some of key competences important uh, in both are uh, learning to learn, social and civic competences, also cultural awareness. Um, these are uh, three competences of the European three of the eight competences of the European uh, just to underline some uh, outcomes, uh, we can read the activation of uh, usually passive children, preventing violence, uh, bottom-up processes, and what type of challenge uh, the participants uh, underline in the leadership competencies. They write something about open class, uh, which involves parents, uh, actively involve the trained teachers and not an isolating learning environment, but an occasion to guide change in the everyday methods of education. So, um, just go ahead. In this slide, we can see both final output for the second and for the third competences, as we can see for uh, uh, the leadership. So we have creativity and uh, commitment. In creativity, just to underline some part of this um, chart, we can see uh, what type of creativity, the expression one, dance, theater, music, sculpture, how to do that, supporting a different way the models of expression by the construction of stories, by open imagination, uh, what type of uh, key competences involved, and they want uh, communication, lateral thinking, the awareness, inclusion, of course, as well, and the empowerment. Just to go on the commitment, and I want to stress, uh, for example, what type of commitment they want to uh, facilitate the feeling of the part of the process as a team, so related to the teamwork competences, and step-by-step -step approach. What type of uh, mm, key competencies both they uh, identified creativity, empathy, self awareness, empowerment, inclusion, and so on. With experiences, which is very interesting, they write uh, uh, dance, music, singing, and what type of challenge, for example, 
and they write uh, the Enbridge, the group to develop that over aim to reach as a group. So really did also do the uh, teamwork uh, competencies. The last one, competencies I have mentioned um, before and chosen by participants in the communication, as we see, and this is related to the need of uh, sharing we need to uh, share the results from a particular project, and especially if uh, the project involves different partners, uh, in different stakeholders uh, from different places uh, and uh, country. The communication, in fact, play a key role in the sustainability of the project and the visibility of the work uh, and the visibility of the results of the project, especially in terms of uh, learning for the future and uh, in change uh, implemented by each participant, but if participant uh, involved. So in uh, this chart we can read what type of communication and they wrote photos, painting, writing, listening, different type of, uh, of art, like sculpture, what type of key competencies involved in the end, like self-awareness, the outcome was uh, changing balance between the good and the less good students, creation of a trans and confident platform, dynamic of change, exhibition, what type of challenges, exchange, empowerment, working a team, as always, and, uh, and so on. So, uh, this is the final session now, so I'm uh, going to talk about the last, and uh, which is the third part of the workshop uh, in Palmaria during the Meta project. The main goal of this section uh, was the brainstorming, and in particular the brainstorming between uh, participants uh, in order to share uh, and uh, collect lots of information under the project and divide it in particular in uh, intentionality and awareness, outcomes and learning competencies and meta methodological innovation. And in this slide uh, here we can find the last one information about the project which explains the results of the of the workshop. In details, in these three different books, uh, we can read the results of the day that we have had in, uh, in Palmaria. In the first book, we underline the role of uh, art in science education as a successful driver for a proactive learning and for a proactive uh, uh, way to do education. And art, in fact, as an expression of cultural and personal heritage is also an uh, instrument for an inclusive society. And uh, in fact, the last two bullet points in the first box focus on uh, results, uh, which focus more on competencies and less uh, in uh, activities, as you can uh, maybe. In the second box, we can read the, the development of an uh, holistic uh, approach, uh, which means an uh, all-around vision, uh, and which is also related to the systematic thinking, uh, which is essential also for education to sustainability. Uh, the second point is the building of a common framework that links uh, different and uh, it is because we have people from uh, different programs, from different uh, studies, work and so on, as you are uh, at this moment. The third one is a uh, widening of the possibility to educate to art and connecting and disadvantaged as an approach. And the uh, last one, this second box, is to uh, learn how to plan according to the special needs of the class. Last one, the box that uh, want to stress uh, the partnership 
network. The network between school and arts, and in particular between the school and artists. Uh, one and important way to promote the development of uh, art based uh, education and to develop art based learning. Again, uh, with the network, the second phase, the second point says transfer and exchange in network for the learning for art. And again, the disciplinarity, uh, dynamic leadership, combination of different uh, art. Sculpture, such as painting uh, uh, and history of, of art, and so on. Again, we also can uh, read an important lesson that people said to Lambert, which is to motivate children. Uh, to motivate children, we need to be motivated to have fun while developing capabilities and capacities. The artists and the teacher are the first that must have fun in what they do. And the final one, which is a new lesson, uh, that said to know how people with uh, interesting um, ideas experiment new educative practices trust in Europe. Um, more with uh, the final uh, results. Uh, in one hand, on the emotional side, uh, with results about feeling, uh, it is possible to notice a uh, lot of elements that emerge, that emerge as new, uh, which Moka collects uh, with, uh, with post-its that I showed you um, first, uh, which was uh, sharing a wonderful experience uh, with interesting people, developing new sustainability and approach to diversity, uh, be more open to new vibration, sharing emotional design and defenses. Um, in the other part, we try to summarize also the lesson learned in uh, four uh, different points, in uh, four different parts, and we collect that. And, uh, they say that the uh, importance to actively involve children in the workshop, the possibility to create workshop also for the uh, teacher, learning through art must be integrated in order to change the ordinary education methods. This is very, very interesting part of the lesson work. And uh, education to art is a way to experiment a new number of the living together and also connected to the learning by doing that I explain uh, to all of you. So, now I have finished to tell you and the report the main and the important elements learned from the other experience on the art-based education and the importance of uh, enhanced art in uh, three different contexts of education, uh, which is uh, which are formal, non formal, and uh, informal contexts. Uh, as I said, first, MOCA has, uh, of course, a role inside the project. And uh, if you uh, remember at the start of my presentation, I talked about to all of you uh, the expertise of MOCA, the activities and services of MOCA, and uh, in particular, I say that one expertise is the impact of and uh, long-term assessment of project and uh, evaluation and uh, assessment generally in order to uh, create, uh, in order to write a final report uh, with no long results of the project. We work a uh, lot on this and uh, capacitarte, in Capacitarte, uh, MOCA has the evaluation of the project. And now I'm going to explain to you the different steps of our path for the validation and for the evaluation. First of all, the team of assessment, uh, Gita Esposto is the president and uh, she also is the co-founder of MOCA. Uh, she was in the Mary Island in the facilitation of the workshop. Air task. Uh, in this evaluation team, 
include the coordination of each staff group, of evaluation, and the supervision of all these processes. In this sense, uh, we can say that uh, she is a team leader, of course. Uh, the second person uh, is me, Silvia. I am a member of VOCA, and my task uh, in, the, in the evaluation are uh, the development of the evaluation tools, the data analysis, and the development of the final report. Uh, with me, there also is Tiziana Mamoiti, she is another co founder of VOCA Future Designers, and task are the, the same of my task. In fact, she always she worked on the development of evaluation tools, that analysis, final report. Uh, we always work uh, as a team. Uh, we used to work together, so that's why we have an evaluation team for, uh, for this project. Which objectives do we want to evaluate? And uh, in this slide, we can find two of the objectives that we uh, will evaluate for this. Uh, capacitative project. The first one says that the Erasmus is a learning space for participants with uh, collecting and systematizing lesson learned on the process of international knowledge and skill exchange among all departments. What have we learned from, uh, from this project? Okay, so in uh, this is my last slide of uh, today. Yeah, we can see inside that uh, all of the process and uh, most important elements of, uh, of the process of that. The first line shows the two steps and the two tools that we will use for the evaluation of this uh, project. The first tool is an online questionnaire uh, we will send uh, to all of you with uh, three different types of questions and uh, of course with three different types of answers. The first one is the cross-check question. Uh, the second is the Likert scale question. And in fact, we will uh, create a scale from one to five to know your personal idea, to know your personal feelings about, uh, about the different topics about uh, the project. The last one type of question is the open answer question. Uh, the second part of the evaluation project is the final reflection, as uh, we can see with a brainstorming uh, similar to the brainstorming that we talked about uh, first. The final outcome of the process of evaluation is of course the, the final record with the analysis of that evaluation which is then a mixed methods analysis so with the qualitative and quantitative uh, data mm. And uh, also with uh, lesson learned and recommendation for uh, for action. Uh, in the recommendation for action, uh, we want to uh, we will want to underline the lesson learned, especially for the future, especially for the stability for uh, of the project. At the end, in the last line, uh, we can see the timeline. <clears throat> so the timeline of the evaluation of process that MOCA uh, will do. We will start in mid-February to <coughs> mid-April with the online questionnaire. Later in May, after the data analysis of qualitative and quantitative answer, we will go uh, through the sharing of results that we underline the stress and uh, during our next meeting in Fermo, in Italy, and I hope to see all of you personally at this uh, occasion, at this meeting. The last part, at the end, uh, at the end of May, uh, this is the, the final report that Mocha will send to you. This is final report with an online answer to questionnaire and the uh, brainstorming that we take in the later. So uh, now I have finished my presentation and just one 
Diamonds. Okay. So yeah, <coughs> all of you. And uh, with this presentation and uh, my power with you for today. So I explained to you what Moka will done in the next month for the project as a partner of uh, on that. Is there a possibility to get all these information that she talked about online or yes. per mail that we could read it through one more time um, to know what we're doing actually would be helpful. Um, I'm sorry because uh, there's some problem for me to hear you, but for the first question that I understand that, uh, yes, I can share to all of you this presentation that I have done. I have just shared uh, my presentation with... Uh, I have yes. yes, okay. <laughs> and I don't know if, uh, if you have done another question, but maybe not. Okay. Yes? Very well. Okay. Another question? Okay. Well, thank you, Sylvia, for uh, explaining to us what you're doing in uh, Italy. Thank you. And thank you for joining us online. It's not easy. <laughs> I'm very sad for that because I never see you this sad before. <laughs> well, in previous, in previous week I was very excited because I'm a big and huge fan of my weight. So I said, ah, oh, it's a beautiful time to go to Bruxelles to visit the also museum, but uh, maybe for next time. Yeah, there will be other opportunities for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Next meetings may be in, uh, in presence. I hope that we will see all of you. So, bye. See you. Bye.